Greetings, I'm Steve Bamford from Golf Betting System and welcome to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, the go, the home of the Golf Betting Show and of course the Golf Betting System podcast. We're back with the Genesis Scottish Open, it's co-sanctioned on both the PGA and the DP World Tour this week. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above, please be gamble aware, you can visit begambleaware.org. For more information, and of course, please bet responsibly, don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource. Oh, so close last week. We had Adam Schenk and Denny McCarthy and Lucas Glover at the John Deere Classic, but couldn't make it two consecutive wins on the trot. But we were there or thereabouts. Now, the Scottish Open. This is my colleague's event, Paul Williams. He does all the DP World Tour action. He's in the box for this one. I will take you through a shortened show this week who Paul is betting at the Scottish Open and just some key pertinent information you need to know. We're putting this out on Tuesday, so a like target. Fantastic. We hit 221 likes last week, so thank you to all of you. Target was 200. You smashed it. What do I need from you guys this week? Let's say 150. I'm sure you guys can do that in a short space of time between now and the first tee off at the Scottish Open. The 150 likes. As we know, 50% of you don't subscribe to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel. So if you're watching this, you like the content, make sure you subscribe. Make sure that your notifications are switched on. That way, you will receive next week's Open Championship Golf Betting Show as soon as it's recorded on Monday. Okay. On top of that, 150 likes, thank you very much. I'm available at Bamford Golf on Twitter. Follow me on that and let me know who you're backing in the comments section below. All of the content I'm going to take you through here, Paul's betting preview, the strokes gained rankings, all of that great stuff is available in the uh, description, video description below. Okay. It's the fifth running of the Scottish Open at the Renaissance Club, which is just down the coast from Edinburgh in Scotland. It's a pretty new golf course. Plays very linksy if the wind and the rain are in play. If the wind lays down, this can be taken apart. It's one of those. It's basically golf by the coast. The Open Championship kicks off uh, next week. But we've got a huge field here. Eight of the world's top 10 and 30 of the top 50 are here at the Renaissance Club in Scotland. Right, course details for you. Uh, it get, Basically, uh, it's sitting on Scotland's Gulf Coast here in the stretch of land between Muirfield and Archerfield links. Aesthetically, it looks linksy. On a stretch of land that's famous for its link tracks and built to a brief to make it appear like it had been there for a century. However, for the purists, it's more links-like than pure links. Trees and an old wall complicate matters in a little in that respect. Balanced with three relatively new holes which flank the shore and typical links features such as deep bunkering, gorse and thick rough. The past 70 is listed as playing 7,000 237 yards for this week's test, as it was last year, although that's from the back tees largely and the DP World Tour have the flexibility to keep the yardage fluid, so it remains to be seen how it sets up each day. Three par fives and five par threes explain the par of 70. Greens are fescue based similar to those used at Castle Stewart in this event in the relatively recent past, as well as at Royal Birkdale for the 2017 Open Championship. Weather forecast. Sunshine and showers has been the order of the day in the lead up to this year's Scottish Open. And more of the same is expected through the four days of tournament play. Temperatures will peak around 17 Celsius, that is 63 Fahrenheit, in the afternoons with wind speeds of around 10 to 15 miles an hour, with the potential for low pressure to develop over the weekend, bringing breezier conditions for the business end of proceedings. Now, 
Weather and this golf course really do play a factor as they do for all coastal golf. And you can see that with the winning scores here. Xander last year was a very tough 7-under. Minwoo Lee, the year before, won at 18-under. Aaron Rye at 11-under. Burnt Wiesberger at 22-under. You've got totally different golf courses, totally different tests, all based upon the weather. And as we sit here in beautiful, leafy Hertfordshire in the UK on a Tuesday morning, clearly we don't really have any idea of what the weather's going to do there. Paul thinks around about 13 to 14 under could well be the winning score. And this golf course undoubtedly does respond to strong driving off the tee in terms of yardages. I mean, Xander was 16th for GD. Minwoo Lee was 16th for, uh, for driving distance. Bernd Wiesberger was 16th for driving distance. So you've got to be near the top of the field in terms of driving distance. But also, especially if the wind is up 15, say 20 miles an hour, you're missing lots of greens around here. Around the green game is very, very important. Across the renewals that we have seen so far to date, if you're looking at it statistically, of course, it's only four renewals, but we are getting a pattern of play out of that. Okay. Predictor model top 10. Paul pulled this predictor model together specifically for the Scottish Open. Best bookmaker of the week has to be Bet365. They are offering... Eight places each way at 50 odds. Within that outright market tab, so you've got five places each way at quarter of the odds. Next to that, eight places each way at 50 odds. And right now, they are offering market best prices in Paul's top 10 on seven of those top 10. Number 10, Tom Kim got a uh, top 10 here last year. 60 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. If I mention each way places, all are 50 odds. Nine is Wyndham Clark, the US Open champion, 40 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Eight, Alexander Bjork. He's in line to finish in the top 10 of the DP World Tour rankings. If he does that this year, he then plays on the PGA Tour in 2024. 100 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way for Alexander Bjork in a great vein of form. Seven, Justin Rose, 45 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. Six, Tommy Boy. Tommy Fleetwood, 22 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Top five, Tyrrell Hatton, 20 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Four, is, is Scotty Scheffler the favourite? World number one, seven to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Three, Patrick Cantlay, 14 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Two, Xander Schofle, 14 to 1 with Bet365, eight places each way. Number one, Ricky Fowler, could he go win-win? Rocket Mortgage, Scottish Open. He has won the Scottish Open previously at a different course. 18 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way on Ricky Fowler. No mention there of Rory McElroy, which is very, very interesting. So Fowler, Xander, Patrick Cantlay, Scotty Scheffler, Tyrrell Hatton, those are the top five as of Paul's tailor-made predictions that he pulled together you can pull your own unique models together completely free of charge on our new predictor model our new optimizer the link is in the description box below i've got no rolling eight week stats because it isn't my preview i have got historic odds of winners xander 20 to 1 minwoo lee 200 to 1 aaron rye 50 to 1 burnt wiesberger 40 to 1 so those are the last four winners all here at the Renaissance Club. 40 to 1, 50 to 1, 20 to 1, 200 to 1. Doesn't exactly shout Scotty Scheffler or Rory McIlroy, does it? And are they going to win the week before the Open Championship? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure personally, it has to be said. Another thing that's worthy of note here is, and this is form in, Xander. 14th and 1st went on to win this. Minwoo Lee, 42nd and 17th went on to win this. Aaron Rye, 15th and 2nd went on to win this. 
Bernd Wiesberger, 16th and 2nd, went on to win this. 1st, 17th, 2nd and 2nd. On their outing prior to picking up the Scottish Open. All available. So maybe we're looking for players with real form right now. And need the victory. Okay, Paul's selections are thus. He is going for Ricky Fowler. He got 16 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way, a 50 odds on Ricky. Already a Scottish winner from 2015 when it was hosted at Gullane or Cullen. Ricky has already shown an appetite for warming up for the Open by winning the, the week before, and that victory is flanked by three other top 10 victories in this event at Royal Aberdeen. Donald Links and again at Gullen. Put simply, he's comfortable on this type of terrain and in this part of the world, 47th last year, on his second attempt at Renaissance, hides the fact that the 34-year-old sat eighth heading into the weekend when his state of game wasn't remotely close to where he is right now. 10 top 20 finishes from his last 11 starts, including that long-awaited sixth PGA foot to a victory. I know I was on him at uh, the Rocket Mortgage at 14 to 1. Last time out in Detroit tells us he's a far better place right now, game-wise. So Paul is on Ricky Fowler, 16 to 1, three points each way. William Hill, eight places each way, 50 odds for Ricky. 18 to 1 is out there right now with Unibet, six places each way. Next up, Paul's gone for another member of the top five of his predictor model. He's gone for Tyrrell Hatton. Of the next tier in the betting, Paul was seriously tempted by Jordan Spieth, who played at the US Open, without... Any support for his troublesome wrist. However, with no competitive play to guide us since that miscut, there's a leap of faith to assume he'll be fully fit. Instead, Paul's going for Hatton. We're all used to the Englishman's histrionics by now when on the golf course. And whilst the self-talk may be off-putting to some punters, fact is, Tyrrell's playing some great golf at present and he knows it. Third at the Wells Fargo, fifth at the Byron Nelson, twelfth at the Memorial and third at the Canadian Open are his last four regular PGA Tour event finishes. And although 15th at the US PGA Championship and 27th at the US Open were disappointing by his standards, both followed very poor starts and need to be taken into overall context. Remember, Hatton is a six-time winner on the DP World Tour. That includes a BMW PGA Championship win at Wentworth in England. As the Tour's flagship event, he's also got three Rolex Series wins, plus two Alfred Dunnell Lynx titles in Scotland. All highly relevant and all show an aptitude to convert contending performances into titles at this kind of level. 14th, 18th and 24th from his three attempts here include rounds of 64, 65 and 66. That's Tyrrell Hatton. Two points each way, 22 to 1. Eight places each way with bet 365. Paul managed to get on Tyrrell. He's now 20 to 1 with the same bookmaker and the same terms. Next up, we said about length, we said about around the green game. If you're looking for a player that can surprise, can win, and um, has won so far this year on the DP World Tour. He was a winner on the PGA Tour last season. How about Lucas Herbert? A point each way, 70 to 1. Eight places each way, 50 odds. Again, with bet 365. He's a three times winner on the DP World Tour since 2020, including the ISPS Handa Championship in Japan this April. That victory might be most relevant if the win does pick up this week as his Butterfield Bermuda Championship success in the autumn of 2021, where he produced a closing round of 69 in the wind and rain to secure his Majin PGA Tour title. Form since his win in Japan has been a little underwhelming with 40th at the US PGA, followed by three missed cuts. However, 15th on his last start at the Travelers Championship, top 17, a designated event level which was, was far more positive, and the 27-year-old's putting in particular caught that, the eye that week, ranking third, four strokes, gained putting. The Australians' efforts in the UK and Ireland over the years are also noteworthy, with third at Walton Heath, seventh at Calgorn Castle, first and ninth at Mount Juliet. All positive, however, form here in Scotland of seventh at the 2018 Dunhill Links and fourth twice here at the Renaissance, in 2020 and 2021, 
suggest he's more than comfortable in this part of the world. Lucas Herbert, 70 to 1. That sounds like a cracking bet to me. Another European, a player that if he's got any kind of Ryder Cup motivations, and I'm sure he has, needs to keep the, motive, uh, keep the momentum going. We've always said with Alex Noren, he's so positive in terms of European agronomy, uh, Northern United States agronomy, it's untrue. Bent grass, Bermuda grass, uh, bent grass, bent power, also a little bit of fescue, not a problem for Alex Noren. It's the Bermuda grass where he tends to struggle. He's never won a professional title on Bermuda grass greens. That's just the fact of the matter. A point each way, Paul's going for Alex Noren, 125 to 1, eight places each way of 50 odds with Boyle Sports. He's supporting the Sc uh, since the Scandinavian mix for the past two seasons. Hasn't worked out well for the Swede with miscuts at both of them. There's a few positive signs of late though. 12th place finished last month. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's start that again. Supporting the Scandinavian mix for the past two seasons hasn't worked out well for the Swede with miscuts at the following week's US Open. The result each time. However, there were a few positive signs in his 12th place finish last month before featuring in a more substantial event last time out by finishing ninth at the Rocket Mortgage. Classic again, top 17, with 5th for scrambling and 7th for strokes gained putting. The UK form I alluded to is extensive with Noren. 2016 saw him win the, Bet the British Masters at the Grove and he followed that up with victory at Wentworth the following year. Ninth at Royal Lytham in 2012 and sixth at Royal Birkdale in 2017 is even more relevant given the quality of field and links terrain this week. And you can add the 2016 Scottish Open at Castle Steward to the list of UK-based relevant highlights. Third and second at the Dunhill Links over the years and second next door to here at Archersfield Links for the 2016 Paul Laurie match play adds further evidence that he could go well here and improve on his 30th place course debut here 12 months ago. That's Alex Noren at 125 to 1. Paul's also gone for Matt Wallace, 200 to 1 this week. 10 places each way. 10 places each way of 50 odds with Ladbrooks. Matt Wallace at 200 to 1. He's gone half a point each way on Wallace. We know that he won on the PGA Tour of the Corrales Championship in March. Second at Hillside at the 2019 British Masters. That's encouraging form for this. And second the following year at Fairmont St Andrews, an event that he really should have won. 14th here at the Renaissance on debut saw the Berkshire man sit in 4th place after 54 holes. And although this is undoubtedly tougher, Matt has plenty of reasons to give this week his full attention. With his underlying form trending nicely. He qualified of course for the Open Championship at West Lancashire Golf Club uh, a few weeks ago. He's hit a second round 64 when missing the cut of the Travellers as well. So he's bubbling Wallace, 200 to 1 and 10 places each way with Ladbrokes. Thanks for coming. Finally, Paul always goes for this individual. I'm not going to go into massive detail. Matthew Southgate, by the coast, Lynx Golf, 8 places each way, a 50 odds with Boyle Sports. Paul took 300 to 1 on Matthew Southgate, who is an absolute coastal Lynx Golf expert extreme. So Southgate at 300 to 1. We've got Matt Wallace at 200 to 1. Alex Noren, 125 to 1. Lucas Herbert at 70 to 1. Tyrrell Hatton at 22 to 1. And Ricky Fowler at 16 to 1. Those are your six to follow this week at the Genesis Scottish Open, of course. Open Championship next week. Can't wait for it. The Golf Bank Show will be out on Monday. There is a Open Championship Research podcast coming out, also available, of course, here on the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel, on Thursday or Friday of this week. Available over the weekend. Listen out for it. See you again soon. Hope your bets go well. Don't forget, 150 likes and subscribe to the Steve Bamford Golf YouTube channel.